Merry Christmas everybody and welcome to my 12 Days of Christmas. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome if you are new. My name is Kevin, I am a geek and you are watching Kevin the Geek. And so, for my first year of doing um, kind of reviews and video game streams and things like that, I was thinking, what would I like to do for Christmas? And I thought, let's use this opportunity to do some movie reviews. And I was thinking, yeah, what are some good Christmas movies? And I thought... You know what? Let's try and look at some of those movies that people consider as the ultimate Christmas classics every single year that you gotta you've got to watch every single Christmas. And that's what we're gonna do. So over the next 12 days, I will I'm gonna be reviewing eleven different quote unquote classic Christmas movies. And then also there'll be one additional one which is a a controversial film, to say the least, or as to whether it is or is not a Christmas film. So that will be more of a discussion as to whether I view that as a Christmas film or not. But for today, for day one, we are going back to one of the earliest Christmas movies that has ever been produced. Something that, until now... I have never, ever actually watched. So today, we will review It's a Wonderful Life. So, It's a Wonderful Life is a movie that is always on Christmas every single year, but thus far, I've never watched it. I've probably recorded it every single year with the intention to watch it, but unfortunately, I've just never got around to watching it. So, yeah, this is what we're doing today. So, um... What I'll do, first of all, is I'll say that I did enjoy it. It is actually a really good movie. And I've never really been into black and white movies, so I was a bit hesitant to how, how I would kind of look at a movie like that. But I watched the whole thing, and I enjoyed the vast majority of it. So let's get started. There are going to be 10 different categories that I will use to rank the Christmas movies. Slightly different if you've seen any of my Doctor Who videos. Uh, these ones, the categories are going to be slightly different, but each category will get a score out of 10 to give an overall score out of 100, which I will then use to determine my overall ranking of the movies at the end. Okay, so starting off with the actual story, it's sort of almost like a opposite um, telling of A Christmas Carol, which is you know, quintessentially one of the most well-known uh, Christmas stories. Um <clears throat> So you have you follow uh, throughout the movie uh, the life of uh, George Bailey. You see him as a child, and you see him uh, growing up, uh, being an adult, and you go through his, his you know kind of his life. It kind of tells the ending of the movie quite early on because you have this weird sort of um, kind of scene of almost like narration. And, and it happens a couple of times as you go through the movie where I, I suppose they're supposed to be angels, but it almost makes it look like they're aliens from another world. It's a bit a bit weird. Um, but you basically, it, it's going to be that George gets depressed and wants to commit suicide. And they're going to send uh, an angel, or rather an angel in training, uh, to basically stop him from committing suicide, basically. Um, and so it's, it's a movie that's just over two hours long. And the first three quarters of it is spent getting to that point of where he actually goes to commit suicide. And it's only really the last half an hour or so where you see kind of the when when he's actually going to commit suicide. And then the guardian angel, um, Clarence, to go to talk him out of it and showing what his life would be like if he wasn't born and how differently everything would have played out. Now, I would say that for that first sort of hour and a half, I feel that goes on a little bit too long. Um, 
I mean, it does a good job of, of getting you to understand the character and, and to really feel some emotional connection towards him and his family. He's a really likeable character. But it just feels like it drags on too long. And then the ending part feels like that was a little bit rushed. Um, I think as an overall story, I really did enjoy it. Yes, it probably went on a little bit longer than necessary to get to the point. And then the actual kind of emotional climax was a little bit short. But as an overall story, I enjoyed it. So I'm going to give the story 7 out of 10. Now the setting of this movie, it is in a very small uh, sort of American town, uh, Bedford Falls, I think I think was the name of it. Um, it said, of course, obviously the movie itself was only you know written and, and released in 19, uh, was it 1947 or 1946? It was one of the two, so it was literally just after the conclusion of uh, of the Second World War. Um, but the main setting, it was in this small town. And um, and it really gave you that that feel that it was a very small town. Like every every character sort of knew each other, and especially George, um, because obviously he's doing a lot for his local community. It really felt lived in. Um, there wasn't a lot that you could really do with it, but you know it was a nice sort of town atmosphere, um, really good community spirit. So uh, you know it it. I mean, it could you could have done definitely done a lot more with it, but then also if you'd done a little bit less with it, it probably wouldn't have had that same impact. So I'm going to go slightly above average, and I'm going to give the setting a six out of ten. Now the music isn't something like amazing to write home about. Of course, it was in the forties, so things were still kind of developing in terms of cinematic score at the time. Probably a lot more music happened in the last few minutes with. Um, you know the family and and the and the townsfolk kind of singing, you know, some carols and stuff. Um, but again, it, it it was a sort of a community feel. You know, there wasn't a you know tremendous orchestral score to kind of give it this you know kind of gravitas that you tend to get with more modern movies. But the music was you know was was really good. So I'm going to give the music a six out of ten for this movie. Now, the next category that I'm taking a look at is the Christmas message. Um, and the, this one really tried to hone in on, I mean, not just necessarily a Christmas message, but a message in general. Um, and throughout the film, what the, what it tries to establish is that George Bailey is a really loving person. And he obviously gets that from his dad. You know, his dad owns this company where he's trying to give people the the American dream and to basically be able to own their own home. And George is a bit of a dreamer and he really wants to kind of go out and he wants to explore and he wants to do all this stuff. But he, of course, his father dies and he wants to keep his father's dream alive. And he does everything he can to the point of sacrificing, you know, potential monetary gains that he can do more to, you know, um, give more to his family and everything. And that really rings true. You have the scene where um, Mr. Potter basically says to him, you know, he basically he wants to get the, the business from him because he wants, he wants to own everything. He wants to monopolize everything. Um, and he makes George an offer of a job where he'll get $20,000 a year. Which, of course, at that time was big money. Um, so he would be basically increasing his earnings tenfold. But he doesn't want to sell out. You know, he wants to give other people that chance of of having their own businesses and living their own dreams and having their own homes. And and this, of course, you've got to remember, this is set at a time where it was where the, the the business almost lost out around about the time of the Great Depression, which was, of course, 1929. And, and then, of course, you have the Second World War. So all these things, it would have been a really troublesome, you know, time financially. But he, you know, wants to make sure that everyone gets their their own opportunity. And that's a lovely message. And when, of course, he... he almost loses the business right right towards the end because his uncle loses the money that they were going to put into the bank. And unfortunately, Mr. Potter, 
well, was an absolute jackass and keeps the money, you know, when it came to him unexpectedly by accident. The fact that it drives George to suicide, you know, because he, you know, he thinks that he's more valuable to people dead than he is alive. That's a really sad moment to get into that movie. Um, and of course, that's where Clarence comes in and tries to show him the true value of his life and what he's done for people and what he really means to them. And then, of course, you have the whole town coming in. You know, they think he's disappeared or they think something's gone wrong. And they basically give him all of their hard-earned money just to keep his business afloat so he can continue doing what he's doing. That's a really lovely message. And then you have the final thing, the, the gift from Clarence to, to, to George, where he gives him the book, um, Tom Sawyer. And in that book, he writes the message. Remember, no man is a failure who has friends. That really tugged hard on my, on my, uh, on my heartstrings. And for the first sort of hour and a half of the movie, I was probably going to think, yeah, this is, this is an alright movie. But that last half an hour was so emotional, so gut-wrenching, I actually cried. Um, when all, all the, the towns come in and they're handing over the money and, and that message comes up. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. That was a good Christmas message. It really was. Um, I would have liked a little bit more of it. But yeah, that message was, oh, beautiful. So the Christmas message is going to get a score of 8 out of 10. Now the Christmas cheer... This one I can't quite score as highly as the Christmas message because the Christmas cheer, well, anything to do with the Christmas only, again, kind of comes in in the last sort of half an hour or so. Um, and the majority of that is at the time when George is going through the really dark phase. So I didn't feel a really great sense of Christmas cheer. Apart from maybe the last five minutes of the movie. So it's going only going to get an average score. If it had been longer, more sustained throughout the movie, I would have given it of a higher score. But as it is, I'm going to go straight down the middle, go average, and give it a five out of ten. Now, the main character, George Bailey. So they really went all out to make George as likeable of a character as he could. I mean, you can see that right from the start. He, uh, of course, him and his friends, they're going um, sledding uh, onto onto a lake. And, of course, his brother, Harry, falls into the ice and he selflessly, you know, jumps in to, to save him at the cost of losing the hearing in his, in his left ear. Um, so, you know, straight away, you've got that sense of, you know, he, he's, a, he's a person who really wants to do well for, for his family. But he doesn't initially want to go into the family business. Um, he he's very much a dreamer. And he wants to uh, go around and see the world and travel and and learn uh, lots of stuff, um, which which I think is fundamentally you know a nice uh, characteristic to have because he very easily could have just been written like he's born in, into this life and he want uh, and they want him to carry on the the legacy of his father, um, but they they kind of build up to it that he's kind of having to do so reluctantly, and um, because his father tragically passes away and you know Mr Potter wants to close down the business he has to do it you know and he has to sacrifice everything he's ever wanted but of course good things come out of that you know the money that was only saved for him because only one of his family of him and his brother was going to get to go to college um because he stays on for for the business he then um puts gives that money to his brother and so Harry is the one who gets to go to college um, I wasn't very keen on the stuff with Mary, um, uh, especially not, but actually I don't, I never really got the, the good sense. I mean, the very opening scene with them, um, um, was, was really lovely. You know, they're coming home, well, they're at the dance and, and they've got the, the amazing moment where, uh, someone opens up the, the dance floor so that it opens and then there's a pool in the middle because obviously he wants to, you know, make George 
falling and everything like that. Um, and the bit I loved the most was when they eventually do fall in, George just wants to carry on. And you see him doing a little bit of a dance uh, with Mary in the water, and then everyone jumps in. That was a lovely scene. Um, but then, of course, they're going home, and then you've got the whole, like, the Buffalo Gals, when you come outside, they're singing that together. Um, and then one of the most iconic lines of movies that I'd always heard, but I never knew where it came from. What is it you want, Barry? What do you want? You, you want the moon? Just say the word, and I'll throw a lasso around it and pull it down. Hey, that's a pretty good idea. I'll give you the moon, Mary. I'll take it. That that is a classic for a reason, you know. It, it's it's a lovely, lovely little bit of dialogue. But then everything after that, after he has to take over the business, I just, yeah, I got the sense that they didn't. He didn't want to be with her, and and just something felt a little bit off with 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 that. But yeah, it was it was a nice interaction. Um, and I get why he would be driven to suicide. You know, I really do. The fact that he has done absolutely everything he can to provide for everybody else and the time that he desperately needs someone to give him a break, they don't give it to him. So, yeah, I liked George as a character. He he was one that was very, very likeable all throughout the movie. And I was rooting for him. So... Um, I'm going to give George a rating of 7 out of 10. Now, the supporting characters, there were, of course, many characters in this movie. You had Mary, you had his uh, George's uncle, you had his mum and dad, you had his brother. All of them sort of cropping up here, there and, and everywhere, really. Um, I don't think any of them really got a tremendous amount of development, not in the way that George did have. Um, but, you know, they were good, solid characters, very, very nicely uh, portrayed. Um, and I felt so badly for, for the Uncle Billy, you know, that moment where he loses the money and that, of course, sets in motion all the rest of the actions of the, uh, the remainder of the movie. Um, but yeah, overall, a good amount of, of supporting characters. Um, so the fact that a lot of characters didn't really get that much development for the amount of characters that it was, I think that was a bit of a detriment. I'm going to give the supporting characters 6 out of 10. Now, the Grinch of the piece, of course, is uh, Henry Potter. Uh, the just unforgiving, scrupulous, um, you know, businessman who wants everything and will ne never give anything himself. He's probably actually more of a Scrooge than a Grinch, I, I would actually say. Um, he appeared in a lot, but he didn't have, again, he didn't have a lot of development. He was just there to present an obstacle to George. And every time it came down to the same thing, he wanted the business. Um, he wanted all the people to give him loads of money uh, and not own their own home. So he, he was basically a landlord. He wanted them to rent. He didn't want them to, to own. So, I mean, again, nothing taken away. He was good in what he needed to do. But the character, there just wasn't a great deal behind it. So for Mr. Potter, the Grinch, the Scrooge, I'm going to give him 5 out of 10. Now, of course, you cannot have a Christmas movie without any snow. And... Again, obviously, taking into consideration that a lot of this movie isn't actually set at Christmas. Uh, the times that it is, there's a lot of snow. And every time I, I see those scenes, it just puts a smile on my face. Particularly the scene when he's on the bridge, and the amount of snowfall that he's in, it just felt so Christmassy at that kind of moment and, and, and those kind of scenes. So, yeah, I like that. Um, as I said, not as much snow as I would have liked seeing. So... The snow's going to get a 7 out of 10. And finally, Christmas decorations. Again, it's not Christmas unless you have some Christmas decorations. Because the scene was so literally set at Christmas, there wasn't a great amount in, in there. Um, pretty much it, it was when George comes home after, you know, he, he's a Bincy Potter and, and he's not giving any money to kind of carry on doing what he's doing. 
yeah, there was only really the scene in, in the house and then all the snow and everything outside. So, yeah, average score there, 5 out of 10. Now that we've added up all of the categories, I can reveal that the grand total finale is 62 out of 100. So, It's a Wonderful Life gets ranked as a C+. Now, I think It's a Wonderful Life is probably more of an American uh, tradition and institution, more so than a British one. Um... I mean, you can pretty much guarantee it's going to be on TV at Christmas at some point um, over the Christmas period here in the UK. But it's not one that I tend to hear everyone clapping going, oh my God, it's Christmas time. What Christmas movie have got? We've got to put on it. It's a wonderful life. You know, for a lot of us, it's things like um, Elf and Home Alone and The Santa Claus and, and movies like that. Um, it's a wonderful life is one that I tell you what, I'm going to start considering I, I watch more at Christmas. It's it's kind of like, for me, The Goodfellas. Goodfellas, I love as a movie. But when I watch it, I have to give it a really a long, long amount of time before I can watch it again. And this is, is that kind of one. I mean, you could argue that you would have had the same impact had you taken away the Christmas elements of it. But that's what I think just gives it that little boost at the end. Otherwise... I don't think it would have been maybe as good of a movie and it wouldn't have been remembered in the way that it probably is, as it probably is. But I enjoyed it. And like I said, I cried at the end because it's a humdinger of an ending. I'm I'm not going to lie. I'd give the, the ending of the movie a 10 out of 10. Really would. It just nailed everything that it needed to do. But that is going to do it for day one of my 12 days of Christmas. Come and join me again tomorrow as we go for another classic movie and we watch the movie that came out the following year, White Christmas. But until next time, my name is Kevin. I'm a geek. You've been watching Kevin the Geek. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. But for now, Merry Christmas, everybody.